I lift my hands in total praise to I lift my hands. Everybody, bless you. Man, there'd be so much stuff going through my mind. I'm going to be on here. Maybe I probably shouldn't have said seven minutes. I probably, probably should have said three minutes. <laughs> I got so many stuff going through my mind. Divine joy. Divine joy, it increases the way that you love people. You guard your focus to guard your joy. You guard your focus to guard your joy. You never become a victim of not having the focus that God wants you to have. All throughout the day, you have to shift your focus to what God wants you to think, to what God wants you to entertain. Your life will not be just an experience with only the things of the Lord, you will experience the things of Satan. You'll have to know what to cast down. You'll have to know what to eat. Not every food that comes to your mind is food that you're supposed to digest. Some food is toxic. Some food is illegal. Some food is not permitted by the Holy Spirit. Something that the Lord was speaking to me about was Genesis chapter 4 begin to minister to me about Genesis chapter 4. I believe it was in verse 2, if I'm not mistaken. But is in Genesis chapter 4, it says that Abel was a keeper of the sheep. There's always somebody that the Lord is going to send into your life that will keep you. Abel was a keeper of the sheep. So he had an anointing from God to keep the people of God. He had an anointing to keep them in joy, to keep them in peace, to keep them in victory, to keep them in faithfulness, to keep them in maturity. Whoever causes you to become mature is a divine connection. People that encourage you to be careless, people that encourage you to be reckless are your enemies. Any advice that makes you bitter is not from God. Any advice that destroys your passion to love is not from God. Anything that destroys your passion to keep peace is not from God. Genesis chapter four, in verse eight, it says that Cain and Abel was in the field. And all of a sudden, while they were talking, the Bible said in verse eight, that Cain rose up. And when he rose up, the Bible declared that he slain Abel. He killed Abel in the field. Now, what I want you to understand is that the field was the place of the assignment. In the place of the assignment was where Abel was murdered. He was in the place where God wanted him to be. But he still experienced the killing. I want you to remember that. Secondarily, the Bible said that the blood of Abel cried out. So the next part after his death was blood crying out. So he goes to the field. There's a conversation with Cain. That's number one. Number two, Cain rises up and kills him. That's number two. He dies in the assignment. And number three, the blood cries out. Here's what I want you to understand, saints. Number one, there's always going to be a conversation over your life. Where's the conversation? It's between God and Satan. Where's the conversation? It's between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There's always a conversation over your soul. The Bible said in Jude that Satan argued for the body of Moses. The Bible said that when Jesus died, that they wanted to guard the tomb for his body. There's always an attack or a conversation for your body. That's number one. 
number two. I want you to remember this. That Abel was murdered in his assignment. Here, saints, not only will you have to die to yourself to step into your assignment, but you'll die to yourself while you're in your assignment. He was murdered, he was killed while doing his assignment. If you're taking notes, always remember this, that before you can be ready for your supply, you have to be ready to die. Before you can be ready for your supply, you have to be ready to die. What happened secondarily was he died in his assignment. Abel did nothing wrong. It doesn't matter if we looked at the dead body and said, why was Abel in the field? That was his place of assignment. But secondarily, when he died in the assignment, it was a revelation that whenever God assigns you to a place, don't be a shock when he permits you to get murdered in the same place where your mantle is. Don't be shocked when he allows you to get fought where your fire is. And don't be shocked when he allows a war where your weapons are, where your worship is, where your wisdom is, because that's what happens in your assignment. One thing that you must catch about Abel is his name represented the grace of God. It had the same definition of what grace does. His name was Abel. I had to look back. I, I was, uh, the brother was breathing on my neck. That's what happened. <laughs> Shoot. I was, nah, he, he had well breath. I felt the, the, the well breath, the well breath, well breath. Yeah, well breath. I had to look back, and make sure that you, you hear somebody. Oh. I look back, it got well breath. Now, secondarily, what you must see is that whenever God gave anybody an assignment, they experienced death. For Joseph, it was the pit. For Jesus, it was the cross. For Abraham, it was his son, Isaac. So everything had a pit. Everything had a cross. Everything had a death. For Moses, it was the 40-day fast. For Ruth, it was the death that she experienced the loneliness she experienced. Everybody had a time of dying in the assignment. But after Abel died, the Bible said that his blood cried out. Here's what I want you to understand, is that the blood represents for us the blood of Jesus. When there's a conversation going on, like verse 8, chapter 4 in Genesis, where Satan is arguing for the life of the child of God. And number two, he attacks the child of God in the field. And number three, then the blood cries out. It is a sign of Revelation chapter 12. And Revelation chapter 12 said, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So after there's a debate over your life, your soul, from the satanic kingdom. And number two, when you experience being killed in your assignment, then there's number three, where the blood will cry out on your behalf. And the blood always causes you to overcome Satan and causes you to have the victory. There's a supernatural thing that happened in verse eight. Even though it was death, it was a new beginning. How? It was in the verse 8. 8 is the number of new beginnings. When he went to verse 8, he experienced death, but it was a new beginning for Abel. Why? Because now he was in another dimension with God. He was in the glory of God. He was in paradise. 
he was promoted. The beautiful thing about this story is once again, that Abel's name was a prophetic name because his name reflected the ability of God, the grace of God. Abel, we know God is able. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it was talking about your finances, your provisions, that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance to every good work. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we see that it says God is able. So here's the revelation. God is able. So when Abel died, it was the same as when Jesus went to the cross as our God and died and his blood spoke on our behalf. Here's the powerful thing about this. Abel, even though he experienced the conversation, verse eight, Satan talking over his life, he experienced the killing in his assignment. Number three was his victory where his blood cried out. Somebody, you watching me right now, you need to catch this, that it don't matter what conversation is going on about your life. It doesn't matter if you get killed in your assignment. Number three, the blood of Jesus is gonna cry out for you. You remain blameless, you remain focused, you remain mature, you walk in love, you walk in the spirit, you walk in the grace of God, and let the blood do all the talking, not you. Divine grace is a divine taste of how God operates. It's an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Grace is an encounter with the voice of God when he speaks to you. It's personal. Nobody hears it but you receive the empowerment. Samson had the anointing flowing through his hair. Always discern where the anointing is flowing through for you. Most times it's your man of God. Most times it is the instruction to remain silent, the instruction to avoid a person, the instruction to not go to a city, the instruction to not receive an invitation, the instruction not to be in the company of certain people. Always know what is your hair, where the anointing will flow through, where the covenant of God will flow through in your life. Samson had his hair, you have to know your hair. And when you find it, you flow in that hair. You never cut it off. And you remain in the strength and the grace of God because God is able, God is able. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things to abound to every good work. In the name of Jesus, I pray over your life that as Abel had the ability of God on his name, the grace of God on his name, that you'll have the same grace of God on you. In Jesus' name. Saints, listen. Man, it's cold out here. Listen, I'm about to go inside. It's cold out here. I'm not about that life. It's cold out here. And about two brothers, they, they listening to me right now. They be listening to the gospel. Listen, saints, I'm gonna tell you this right now. One of the brothers, he, he was the one with that well breath. So I'm gonna get up out of here because I don't know what's gonna take place. You know what I'm saying? I might have to. I might have to pull out my, you know, my stick. Ah, dog on it, not the stick. I, that's the wrong phrase. I ain't mean to, I might have to, ah, uh, you, in the name of Jesus, bless you in Jesus' name. Bless you in Jesus' name.